are such an asshole. I uh, I should have charged more than this one because I didn't really. I looked at the time. How long is this video? I'm like, oh, it's six minutes. I won't take too long. And I didn't realize that the uh, client linked me to a video by a Marxist professor. And I I just get so tired. It, it's it really is rolling with the pigs in mud because the <clears throat> what what you have to do is engage in sophistry and. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm like intellectual dishonesty and word games and all that. So I'll, I'll give you a real quick thing. Richard Wolf is a professor um, and he has a video on capitalism and poverty and his main thesis on this. Well, let me read. I'll just read the request. Uh, does he want, he wants uh, to remain anonymous. We'll just keep you anonymous. He says, uh, I have found a video on, on gravel Institute. Okay. Already Institute. That tells me not somebody working a real job. And it's a lifelong professor, and it's uh, by uh, Richard Wolf. And is I would like you to give your opinion on it. <clears throat> and and my opinion is, in order to argue points, and 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 to progress, to make progress into a conclusion, right or wrong, or maybe we don't know, you cannot engage in sophistry. You don't know what a sophistry is. It's it's word games. It's like, whoa, I didn't know you meant that. Oh, I didn't know that you liked Hitler, that kind of thing, which, which is what you deal with every leftist and academic and all that. And as like a, an old school, real empirical economist, like what does the numbers say? What's the data say? I mean, there really isn't any emotion or philosophy or or um, word games or or what's his name? I just I hate him so much because it's it, it, the minutia, the. Uh, the gray Chomsky. Well, what do you mean by that? These, these uh, uh, linguists, it's, it's so effing simple. So the, before that's just why I'm so tired. Cause you're not going to win their ideologues. They don't care that their ideology in this case, communism and socialism has killed way more people in peacetime than the Nazis in the greatest days of war killed purposefully. And he surprisingly failed to mention that. And I'm sure they go, well, that wasn't real. I mean, I'm just done with it. I'm done. I'm done pointing to Cuba and Venezuela and Mao's China and Cambo and uh, Pol Pot and uh, North Korea versus South Korea, East Germany versus West Germany. And all they got is, well, the, the, oh, what is it? The something ratio. It measures the difference in relative wealth. Gini coefficient. The rich are getting richer. Yeah, are the poor getting richer too? They are? Shut the fuck up. That's how it works when you go global, you grow exponentially. People are going to get exponentially more money at the top like the Bezos is. And the, yes, they're going to. So that's how exponential math works. As long as the poor ain't getting poorer. <clears throat> and all he's saying, and here's where the word games and the sophistry comes in, is he's saying on a global level, if we measure extreme poverty, why focus on extreme poverty globally? He wants to focus globally. All right, fine, which includes all economic systems. All right. That really extreme poverty, which is designed as $1.90 or $2 by today's standards, I guess, per day, what percent of the population lives above or below that? And uh, the, the claim is, is is roughly, I would be believe empirically true if you want to, you know, however you measure income per capita or GDP per capita just for power purchasing parity. <clears throat> More and more people are getting raised out of that extreme poverty. And I would argue this, not even necessarily due to economic systems, but due to technology. Now, I would also argue capitalism because China's coming into Africa and just loaded them up. Technology has advanced. Cell phone communications, like, you know, Africa really never had to, like, put in telephone wires. Like, they leapfrog technology. That's a different thing. We can talk about that. But I would argue technology more than anything else has increased people's standards of living regardless of what economic system you got in there. Like Cubans today are better off than they were 50 years ago, even though they're still piss poor. How's Haiti, by the way? How about all that money and charity work out there? Oh, by the way, you want to know another little local? You want to go micro? I guess macro, not international. You want to go macro? How's the American Indian community doing with all that free government money? Oh, 
Oh, I mean, I could point to empirical where people are dying or not that well, sometimes dying, suffering immeasurable poverty because of socialism. And, and the, what is it? The soft biggest tree of low expectations, which is what it is. <laughs> and so in, in any case, uh, this academic, uh, his point was, well, it really should be $7.40 per day. Fine. Okay, whatever. And if you measure that, uh, the number of people really hasn't gone down. He shows a chart that it, it's, it's, it's gone. He said, oh, he said it's gone up. Well, actually it plateaued. It's 4.2 billion people that live underneath that thing. Oh, uh, it's 7.4. I'm like, yeah, but the population grew. I mean, we're talking basic fourth grade math bullshit. Did you adjust for the percent of the global population? And then he does. And what happened? It went down. Then his next one, well, that's largely due to China. Well, what the fuck did China do? And this is where he lies. He outright lies. He says, China achieved its lowering of poverty because of Chinese socialist programs, which is like, no, no. Real quick review. It went from Mao Zedong to Deng Xiaoping in the se late 70s, I believe. Deng Xiaoping, watch him. It's glorious to be rich. Deng Xiaoping loosened up the extreme Marxist Maoist type of government economy that they had. And now it's not as simple as, well, and he's like, well, see, China was communist and look what they did. No, <laughs> China is a quasi mutant economy. And I used to cover China back in the 90s and the early 2000s. And they they embraced a lot of aspects of capitalism. Now, they're, they're more of a fascist economy, if anything else, where the government will allow for private ownership and will allow people to get rich. But the government is the final arbiter of things to say the, the, through their state-owned enterprises and China uh, setting up its government policy, whether it's monetary, fiscal. <clears throat> the Chinese government still technically owns or at least controls the vast majority of production that, that happens. But there are some huge free market reforms that have been implemented uh, since Deng Xiaoping's time. And it's happened, God, what is that, 30, 40 years now? I mean, I think it was even Lenin. Was it Lenin? It was like, hey, look, we got to free up. But some even he loosened up things on the on, on small microtransactions. I don't know if it was Lenin or maybe it was no, I don't think it was Stalin. I'd have to look this stuff up again. <clears throat> and so you and, and where the, the the facade or the lies or the sophistry comes in is like, look what China coming. No, China had changed its economy fundamentally. It's kind of a little bit social, kind of, I think fascist describes it best. And it's because of capitalist policies, not necessarily a capitalist government or capitalism, but capitalist policies, aspects of it that have liberated tons of capital and labor from the Chinese people. And they've improved the standards. Like, curiously, you didn't mention India either. Another billion plus population group of people there. And it's... And then what I'm hanging on, I took my note and God damn you client for making me watch. It, it's just arguing, arguing with an intellectually dishonest person is a pain in the ass. Arguing with ideologues is a pain in the ass because they're all squirming. They're not being honest and everything is about their ideology. It's like arguing with a radical Christian or a born again Christian. Nothing, nothing th sinks through because it is the Christianity, the religion, the ideology first, and then the world must fit into it. Um, another thing him like people claim, well, who are these people? And uh, that's just not true. No, you saying that's not just not true. Is it true? I want to know who these people are. And you'll see, he makes these claims about other people making claims. And then he goes to the UN. Oh yeah, that's not biased. That's not biased at all. A bunch of also academic nobodies doing nothing and never setting their foot in the real world. Pontificating. Oh gee, we just need more of other people's money. Um, oh, and then another, what he does with China, does it with the United States, in exporting U.S. capitalism, U.S. capital, we haven't been capitalist in at least 50 years. You do understand, kind of like China hasn't been communist in 30, 40 years fully, the United States hasn't been fully capitalist in 50 years. One might even argue going back to uh, Woodrow Wilson's days, but I'm going to go government spending as a percentage of GDP. We do not have a purely capital system here in the United States. You get a social pension, you get free health care, you got Obamacare, and now I'm talking Medicare, Medicaid, that kind of thing in the past. You got state programs, 
And now, especially with with uh, all the money we spent with stimmy checks, holy, and I have I'd have to look it up. I don't care. But government spending as a percentage of GDP was like four to thirty eight percent under Obama. Maybe it wasn't a little bit down under Trump. <clears throat> Lord knows what it is now with it. But we have not. When you take damn well near forty percent of the economy out of the people's hands and have the government spend it. Don't tell me that's a capitalist system. Do not tell me this is like some kind of Cayman Island tax haven, 1890s America capitalism. It just isn't. Right? This is not Singapore. This is a socialist light economy, and it has been since the Great Society. And so I love it. He's like, American capitalism is failing. No, it's not. We don't have a capitalist. Another perfect example. We had to bail out the banks. See what capitalism got us? No, that's not capitalism. Capitalism, you wouldn't bail anyone out. Banks, homeowners, students, be like, fuck you. And that's what every real capitalist and conservative and libertarian is like, don't bail out the banks. Fuck those guys. For once, the left and the right agreed. But what did we do? We bailed out in it. And we bailed out the automotives. And we bailed out this. And we bailed out the airlines. We bail out, bail out. That's not no, no serious economist, no intellectually honest person would say that's capitalism. I'm like, well, I guess you guys are fucked, huh? Should have saved money for a rainy day, huh? I think Trump was even saying like, oh, yeah, we'll lend you money to the airlines if you give us equity because you guys mismanage your finances. <sighs> uh, what else? Another claim is, you know, he, he says at the rate and he admits that poverty relative, you know, as a percentage of the population is going down. He says, at that rate, it'll take over 200 years to eliminate poverty. It's like, that's pretty fucking good, actually. That's really fucking good. Do you know that from like, you know, whatever, 8,000 BC, whenever we started recording history, to like the 1800s, like early 1800s, like standards of living really didn't improve much. Thousands of years, and then it was the Industrial Revolution, capitalism, freeing up the economy. Read Adam Smith, look at the history of Britain's economy. All of a sudden, like the last, what are it, three, four hundred years, certainly the last 200, that's where the vast majority of technological innovation and freedom and economic growth, that's where you can't, I can't technologically innovate if you're going to take all my fucking money. Go look at the Chinese economy. There's the drawbacks of having a fascist economy, quasi communist. But in the past 200 years, the, the lion's share of wealth and economic production has, has occurred. And that's a blip in terms of human history. That's nothing. 200, you're telling me we can eliminate, uh, uh, poverty in 200 years, that would be amazing. That would be, and he says, and, and no one expects that to have a bullshit that you look at the math of continued growth rates. Are up, like, yeah, it could happen. See, but here's the thing. And this is, this is where all Marxists come in. They're all jealous. They're just jealous that other people have more. You're never going to get rid of these socialists because let's say we got rid of, rid of poverty down the road, like based on relative or adjusted standards. In the future, 200 years in the future, Bob has, um, what are they? We always like hover car. He's got a hover car, but Frank's got a slightly nicer hover car. They're still going to bitch and whine. I mean, we got that today. Poor people in the United States are fat. They're fat and obese, and they got flat panel screen TVs, and they got food, clothing, and shelter. They live like kings compared to people like 100 years ago. They still bitch and whine. Still. It, it jealousy is there, and that's why I can't. This is emotional, and it's a facade. It's all a fraud. The economics profession in general, but certainly the Marxist leftist varieties, because there's no intellectual honesty. They're just jealous, and they try to create and make it look like it's some kind of actual science or study when it's not. It's just a bunch of frauds who want your fucking money, and they're jealous. And this is my final point. I don't give a shit what Marxists say, because that is like three-year-old mentality bullshit. Now, I understand if you look at Dr. Wolf's doctor, <clears throat> if you look at his background, his parents had to escape Nazi Germany. So I can understand why he, he might hate the Nazis and confuse that with capitalism. By the way, America came in there and solved that for you, along with help from the Russians, no doubt the Russians. So you might like, oh, you might have all oh, the Russians liberated us or whatever, or weren't like, you know, the, the Nazis and the Russians are... 
or the Soviets, the communists were at each other's throats. Um, but if you, so I understand that part of his background, but if you look at, he's been an academic his entire life. He's Ocasio-Cortel. This is, this man has never worked a real job in his life. And the irony and hypocrisy and contradiction, like you're for the working people. Are you? Why don't you go work a job then? Why don't you go work security in 20 below zero? Why don't you go shovel shit for a living? Why don't you go work a real job? No, you're an acad a precious academic. You know, and he's 80. Congratulations. You, like millions of other people, want other people's money. Hooray. You made some charts and some bland generalizations, and you cited studies that are that like got less value than the piss I just took in my toilet yesterday. You you claim, oh, look, studies show research. I can have studies show anything I want. Studies show I'm the most amazing fucking man ever. Studies show that if you ignore the 100 million people that communism killed during peacetime, it's not that bad. Hey, what's cat taste like? You got good cat dishes down in Venezuela? <clears throat> and, and curiously fails to mention that. So I just, it's just, he, I don't care if he's old. I don't care that he has doctorate. In front of, he's a child. He is a grown old ass fuck of a child. He has never worked a job in his life. Why would you listen to this person? It's not that I'm going personal. Why would you listen to someone who's never worked a fucking real job in his life? He's no different than Ocasio Cortez. There's no difference. Don't let the gray hair fool you. He's a communist. He doesn't want to work for a living. He believes in the magic happiness of other people do the hard work, and I'll just sit here and smoke my pipe and pontificate, sucking Chomsky's dick. Or Foucault. Foucault was the gay one. The difference between general Marxism and Foucault Marxism is you just add sucking dick. That's it. And it, it just gets tiring arguing with these little children. It's not difficult. Hey, if you pay, gee, I wonder why people can't, you can, I wonder why there's shortages today. Oh, did you pay people not to work? Huh. And the classic, it does, you don't have to get a doctorate. The, the world is full of uh, case studies you can look at. Where it's like, well, how'd that happen? Well, well, let's compare. North Korea, South Korea, anyone? Venezuela before and after? Cuba before and after? Admittedly, Batista was not the most kind guy. I grant you that. I'm talking economic systems. East versus West Germany? Do you kids, do you millennials know that Germany was once split in two? There was a communist theory and a capitalist one. You could consider Western Germany even quasi-capitalist. Zimbabwe? I mean, how many cases, how many case studies do you want? How many? How many? Cuba versus the Cayman Islands. What do you I got? I got all day, all day. Sorry, didn't mean to do that. All right, let's go to the super chats if there are any. No super chats. Good. There you go. The, the answer is. Here, I'll, 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 I'll leave you with this. I'm going to leave you with this. There is no choice in the matter of what economic system is the best. What do we tweak it? <clears throat> Free people is the baseline. Freeing your people, capitalism, is the natural default state of human beings. And you either build your economic system off of that fact or you will suffer the consequences or not as good economic production as you could. I'll give you a perfect example. <clears throat> the United States, not a socialist policy, but, but a government implying government control, implying kind of socialist action, not redistributive, but government says something. We don't allow drugs. Drugs are illegal, right? So they don't, we don't have drugs, right? Oh, wait, we do? How do we have that? Oh, it's called the underground economy. Why? Because free people want their fucking drugs. And there's free people across the globe that'll get it to them. I'll give you another one. Here's another one, okay? Soviet Union, right? This is back in the 80s. Blue jeans are not allowed. No blue jeans. There's not a huge economy, but there was a big economy. Sneaking blue jeans in the Soviet Union. 
and then selling them on the underground economy. The, prostitution. Prostitution is illegal. We don't pay for sex, do we? Have you ever been married and divorced? Y'all pay, but we're talking, we're not talking barter, we're talking cash transaction. That's illegal. So that doesn't happen, right? No. It happens regardless of what type of arbitrary government economic infrastructure or system you put on top of it because free people want to be free and do what they want with their fucking time in the form of money. That's it. That's all it is. And it's the lazy, jealous motherfuckers who want to sit there on their fucking asses, either in academia or on their ass collecting a stimmy check, doing nothing but living off of welfare. Those are the people who want to essentially enslave other people to say, hey, you know, part of your life that you converted working to convert it into money, I want some of that money, which means I want you to work for me, which means I want you to be my slave. When most, not most, all capitalists, libertarians, free market, it's just not even your apolitical or a-economic, you're just like, leave me the fuck alone. It's like, just leave me the fuck alone. I don't ask you for your time and your money. Why are you asking me? Because they're jealous. That's all it is. That's all it is. Now, I understand if it was the French Revolution and you got a bunch of assholes who like actually oppressed. I got that. I understand that. But today, don't tell me it's anything more than a bunch of lazy piece of shit motherfucking assholes who don't want to work and want free shit. That's all it is. And the likes of Mr. Wolf and his academia and colleagues all of academia and the social sciences and the liberal arts has only arisen to provide sophist arguments made out of whole cloth as to reason and rationalize why other people have the right to enslave other people. That's it. That's all it is. And I'm not, I'm not going through this bullshit and the changing of the words and presenting entities and being intellectually dishonest. Oh my God, see more of it to come to the same conclusion. We're entitled to other people's money. All of you grab a big ass stick, put some slivers on it, shove it up your ass. I mean, it's appalling people defend Marxism with its track, just appalling. Whether it's it's communist China, Mao killing all the people, the Soviet uh, uh, starvations and the Holomador. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Or on a micro level, like what we've done to the black community. Oh, we're so much for the poor and minorities. Like, yeah, why do you keep making them poor? Why do you keep fucking them over? Why don't you try something different for a change? I mean, how many more Indians got to like die on the plant, uh, not the plantation, the, uh, the uh, reservations and live in squalor? Well, don't be honest with them. Don't, oh, whoa, not capitalism, anything but that. We just haven't done enough socialism. Asambo, 400, five bucks. Economic efficiency loss of the day. Standing in line behind losers. Buying a lot. Of, ah! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is a huge economic efficiency loss. Absolutely. That is a huge one. Hey, speaking of, uh, oh, no, this is uh, Norwegian or Swedish kroners. I thought it was... Um, Singaporean dollars, 50 uh, S Swedish kroners. I believe that is Mr. Foucault was an original bug chaser, got HIV, then AIDS. In the San Francisco bathhouse scene back in 84, very late to be out of the frolic. I didn't know. I knew he died early. I didn't know he died of AIDS. That's too bad. I don't wish that upon him. I know he's mentally ill. I mean, and, oh, and by the way, sit down, everybody. He came from wealth. Did you know that? Like Mao and Lenin and uh, Ho Chi Minh, or not Ho, yeah, Ho Chi Minh. Oh, Pol Pot, was he highly educated and a spoiled little pampered ass sitting in academia? Somebody look up Pol Pot. OBJ, 54, two bucks, Asambo, 400. Yo, that is what I was thinking. What, what did he think before? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. My favorite is when the middle-aged women just stop at an intersection in the grocery store. That has been an increasing thing. We just, you just <clears throat> stop. No one can get through because you just have to sit there and look at whatever doily bucket they put in front of you. Swallow Blue, it was Khrushchev in the 80s. No, Khrushchev was the 60s. Swallow. The 80s was Gorbachev. Uh, and... Andropov briefly, they had it where in early in Reagan's administration, the first one, um, like the Soviet Union, they, their their premiers just kept dying off real quick. And they went through three real quick. Uh, Brezhnev, 
Andropov, and I think it was Gorbachev. I'm not sure. All right, that's it. Questions, answers, assholeconsulting.com. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.